Hey friends, welcome back. We are gonna be talking a bit more about that upstairs hallway that we started working on in the last video. If you missed it, we went through and painted all of the trim, the doors, and the built-ins up there. We had initially painted this space about a year ago. I'm gonna show a before picture before we did any paint up there. And all of the trim was really dingy looking and just needed a fresh coat of paint. So that's what we worked on for the first couple of weeks that we were doing this. And then we went through and re all around the trim because it had pretty much disintegrated. That alone helped clean up the space so much. And then since that last video, we went through and added some crown molding. We decided to do these decorative corner blocks. We have them in the bedrooms and we thought it would just be a nice way to kind of tie that in in the hallway as well. It really kind of helped to frame the space out, give the space a bit more of a finished look. We would love to smooth the ceilings at some point, but I think that would be something we would hire out to do. We did get a piece of furniture to go up there and I think it's a bit heavy visually. So what I would really like is to find a curio cabinet or some type of cabinet that's up on legs to kind of soften a bit of that like heavy feeling since it is such a tight space. I'm gonna put in a couple of pictures so you can see some inspiration for pieces that I'm looking for. Of course I like to like thrift and look for these kinds of things at estate sales, garage sales, marketplace, all of those things. So keeping an eye out for a piece that would be better suited. We also talked about that built-in that is made for like linen and towel storage and how we would like to eventually maybe put a stackable washer and dryer in there. So I thought it would be nice to have a piece that we could store some towels and linens in. We would store them in there folded nicely. I like the idea of having glass doors on it, but it's not a make or break for me. So just something that's like maybe a deep wood tone on legs could look really pretty up there and store some of those extra linens and things. The concept for the design is like a dark academia feel up there with a subtle nod to Alice in Wonderland. So when I was pregnant, didn't know if I was gonna have a girl or a boy, my idea for a nursery if we had a girl was to do Alice in Wonderland. I have always loved Alice in Wonderland. I obviously love the Victorian era and Alice in Wonderland fits the bill for the Victorian era as it was written during that time and the original illustrations I just absolutely love and wanted to include in this nursery design. We obviously had a boy, which I wouldn't change for the world. So when coming up with the idea of what I wanted to do for the upstairs, not that I think you need a theme to every room, but it's something that just inspires me. I thought this would be the perfect time to kind of incorporate that Alice in Wonderland feel somewhere because I've got such a wide range of space to put little knickknacks and things on this bookshelf. So the subtle elements that I'm thinking about including to give us that nod to Alice in Wonderland are a white rabbit, a pocket watch, skeleton keys, doorknobs, ornate mirrors, teapots, of course. If you have any other ideas of things that would be cool to collect, put them down below in the comments. I'd love to hear what your ideas are that would kind of give a subtle nod to Alice in Wonderland. Still be sophisticated. I don't want it to feel, you know, cartoony, um, but things that just remind us of Alice in Wonderland. So we're gonna do a really quick thrift haul. I also need to get these shelves styled, so I don't want to be too chatty. So let's just kind of get right into it. First up, this is probably my favorite thing that I got, and it's this beautiful frame. It's got like a nice stormy landscape in it. We may change this out for something else if I find a different print that I think is better suited, but I can use this print in a different frame if that's the case. I believe this is just a standard eight by 10. And I noticed when I got home that it also has this cute little girl on the back. I love the colors in it. This one actually might be better suited for the Alice in Wonderland theme. So yeah, we might use this one. It depends on how I use it. If I'm using it vertically, I'll probably use this. If I need to use it horizontally, which I may need to do, then I'll have to find a different print. But it was $8, really pretty, love the color of the frame. So this is one of a few different frames that I got. And I also got this one, which I really like. I love the shape of this. I think this is perfect for the bookshelves up there. I also have a little um, niche like cutout up there that is made to just display something. I know they used to use those, like in our last house, we had one that would have been intended for a phone. The ones that we have in our house aren't big enough and don't have little panels underneath for the things that you would need for a phone. So ours are strictly just decorative, 
Um, but I thought about hanging this in one of those. I think it would be really pretty. I need to obviously get a print for it, but yeah, this is just plastic, but it's still really beautiful. Again, it's got that deeper tone to it, which I really like, and it was $5. I should mention actually all of the ones that have the green stickers I got for 25% off because it was 25% off day. So they were all actually a little bit less than what the sticker says. We're gonna keep rolling with the frames because this estate sale had lots of them. So I grabbed a couple of these little ones. These were 50 cents a piece. They're very, very simple, but what I liked about them is just that they're really small. So they're gonna be perfect for the bookshelf. This one I might rub and buff. I don't love the color of this one so much. It's a little bit worn, but 50 cents, I do need to also get prints for these. So we might look at some prints if I have enough time in this video to see, you know, once we kind of have it styled and see how many frames we actually end up using, then we'll kind of decide what prints we want to get for some of these frames. I have one more frame, which is this one, which I think is also so sweet. And I actually kind of like the little birds in there. So we might keep that, we might change it out. It just depends on if I find something I really, really like and want to trade out. But I love the frame. I think it's really pretty. Again, this one's plastic, but um, this one could probably benefit from a little bit of antiquing wax. This one was $8 and again, 25% off of that. I also picked up this, and this is probably not gonna be used for the bookshelf, but the horse and rocking horse thing I really love, and wooden toys I also really love. We're getting ready to refresh Jameson's room. So I actually picked this up for his room, um, but if we don't end up using it in there, I could definitely throw it on the bookshelf. And it was $5 for this little guy. And then I found this ceramic swan, which I've been actually seeing these everywhere on Instagram. I believe it's a planter, at least that's what most of the ones I'm seeing are for. It's just really pretty. And I, I don't know for sure if I'm gonna use it up on the bookshelf, I might. And I actually just shared in the last video that I found those black swans that I was planning on using on the shelves and I do intend to use those. I might use this one also. I mean, you can just have all the swans. The other thing that I got at that estate sale was this little sconce. It was just $4 brass sconce. There was only one of them, but whenever I see like a good deal on a little sconce, I feel like this is so easy just to throw on a wall somewhere with a candlestick. And I just, I don't pass them up when they're at a good price like that. So that was all for the estate sale. And then for the antique store, I grabbed this little guy. I think it was like 350. So really inexpensive. I just thought it'd be really pretty shelf filler. It actually matches, now that I'm looking at it, the design is really similar to the door knockers that I have in my house that I have shared before. Um, and I'm going to be putting one on one of the doors upstairs, so that will kind of tie that in. Some of the shelves that we have are really short, and so kind of having small things like this is perfect. I got this cloche. Now I did pay, I think I paid like $12 for the cloche, but um, it was just a perfect little bell cloche and I think on top of a book with something inside of it would be really pretty. So that's why I grabbed this. I just was on a mission to get things to style this bookshelf this weekend. So I went ahead and picked this guy up. So while we were at the antique store, I told Luke and Jameson we were on the hunt for a bunny. And I was like, I I'll take a brass bunny. I would love to have like a stone bunny. I actually found this really cool bust. I'll put a little picture on the screen. Um, I think I had it in the mood board, so you might see it in there. And I might order that one. I think it was around $60, so it would be, you know, a little bit of an investment. But if I felt like I had a good spot for it and it would fit perfectly, I would maybe get that. We did find a brass bunny though, so I had to pick it up. It was $8 but we were literally like searching for one the entire time through this huge antique store. So I was just like, I have to get the bunny. It's kind of the perfect time to be searching for a bunny because of Easter. So <laughs> there were lots of bunnies, but just not the right bunnies. This was like the only one that I found that I really liked. This was an estate sale find. I not using these on the bookshelves, but I wanted to share them anyway. I have the goblets. You've seen me use them a million times if you've watched my videos before and a few other things. I've got a couple of vases. I've got just kind of, a, I've collected a lot of this collection, but I didn't have the dessert dishes. And I found these at an estate sale. I got six of them for $5. So I went ahead and picked them up, wanted to share them. I love just having these for tablescapes and be perfect for little desserts, little parfaits or ice cream or something like that. So I thought these were perfect. And I went ahead and grabbed them and wanted to share them because you guys know 
I'm a big fan of the Wexford design. I think it's just so pretty. I love the way it sparkles and so that's that. And kind of in the same family, I found this, which has a very similar feel to it. I got this for $8, but it was discounted to $6, I believe. So really cute. I like the little flowers on it. I just thought it was really sweet. I don't know that I'm gonna use this on the bookshelf. I might use it upstairs, but I might also use this somewhere else in my house. I just went ahead and grabbed it because I liked it. Then I also got some skeleton keys. They were in packs of two for $3 for each pack. And I want to figure out a way to incorporate these somehow into the bookshelf. I don't know if I will hang them on some of the books or um, maybe on some bottles. That was another thing that I would like to incorporate is bottles, which I have tons of vintage bottles, so I can absolutely use some of those for the bookshelves. And on the subject of bottles, I also got this cruet. And again, it's the Wexford design. I actually did get this for the bookshelf. I thought it would be really pretty up there. Just looks like a, like a pretty bottle that you would see in Alice in Wonderland or something. So that's why I got that one. Okay, so now that you've got a feel for some of the items that I picked up to use to style, we're gonna use some things I already have. I've got tons of vintage books that we're gonna use. I do think I probably need more, but as I collect more things and make decisions, including wallpaper, I will keep you guys updated, but let's go style with what we have now. I ended up styling this bookshelf over the course of a few days. So there's going to be a few different segments of styling throughout this video. In this first segment, please excuse the poor quality. I didn't realize that the type of LED bulbs we have up here were causing some banding and just lower quality on my footage. I do resolve it and it does get better, so hang tight on that. As far as styling bookshelves go, what I think is helpful is to alternate the layout of each shelf. So if I have books laying down in one section of a shelf, likely on the shelf below that, I'm going to stand them up in that section rather than lay them down again. Really just kind of keeping the visual interest alive and not repeating the same thing in rows, if that makes sense. I really loved the look of this frame hung on the outside of the bookshelf like this. I didn't end up doing it because Luke kind of thought it looked strange and I ended up using the frame elsewhere, but I've been seeing it a lot in photos on Pinterest and I think it's a really interesting way to layer artwork into your bookcases. So I will probably keep that one in my back pocket and use that sometime in the future. I also like to face some of my books spine side out and some of them page side out. Now I understand for functionality purposes, page side out doesn't make a lot of sense, but I do collect a lot of these old vintage and antique books that are just pretty for decorating. So I get it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but for me, I like it. It's just a style preference and you don't have to do that. It's totally fine. You can still have a beautiful bookshelf with all spines facing out. It is a little bit easier to control your color palette if you can flip around some of the books that don't match as well and have them page side facing out. But again, I think you can do it however you want to. There are no rules. And I also like to stick some decor pieces behind my books, some in front of my books, just kind of layer them in lots of different ways. Hopefully watching this gives you some ideas of how you can layer decor throughout your bookcases. I had nothing to go up on this top portion of the bookshelf on the sides and I found these branches and I thought, you know, these could actually lend themselves well to the whimsical aspect of it. So I ended up going with it. I like that it kind of helps to keep the shape of that top area and then threw in, of course, some fairy lights to add a bit of magic. Okay, so. When I got finished styling on Saturday, there was a whole second shelf. It's kind of a smaller shelf that I didn't have enough books for. And really after styling all day, I was feeling really good about everything that I had done. But for that section, I really wanted to have 
something that wouldn't cause your eye to continue to bounce around, something to kind of stabilize your eye a little bit. So I would love to have a bunch of like smaller matching books to go through the whole thing, but that will be difficult to find. It's something I'm gonna have to keep an eye out for. I ran out on Monday and thrifted a whole bunch of books because I wanted to fill that section. And I came home, I threw them up and styled it. I had forgotten though that the day before, I think it was like over that weekend that I knew I was gonna need more thrifted books. I went on to an online auction and saw this gorgeous set of antique law books. No one had bid on them, so I just went ahead and put the lowest bid, which was $2 on it. And I kind of forgot about it, and then I ended up winning them. So I paid $2.50 total for 13 antique law books. They're really pretty. So once I picked those up on Tuesday, I came back, restyled it. So over those few days, I was waiting on a couple of prints. I went on to Etsy. I also found a couple on the public domain, but I think all of these are available on Etsy. So I'll just link those all below for you. The thing about public domain images is they only come in certain sizes. And so Etsy sellers have programs that they can run these vintage prints through to increase the quality so that they can blow them up essentially and make like several different sizes. So that's something I kind of learned after getting started searching for public domain images. As I continued to look for them, I was finding that all of the ones I liked were really small and I wasn't able to use them in the size frame that I needed. So that's the benefit of going through Etsy. I'm gonna show you these prints. I got some really small ones for all of these little frames. So here are the ones that I chose. I love this one. I think it's so pretty in the brass base flowers. I'm hoping that these all look good in these frames because they're all oval. So we'll kind of see how they actually sit since I couldn't order them, you know, to, to really know exactly how they were gonna look. So that's the first one. This one was one of the public domain images that I found. I didn't see this one on Etsy. This is the only one I think that I could not find on Etsy, but she kind of reminded me of Alice just with the lighter hair color and the pretty dress. So. I went ahead and I edited the colors on this one again to kind of make it darker. Um, the quality is not as great on this one. So you can kind of see the difference. You know, this one is, I don't know if this one's technically like a vintage one, but you can kind of see the difference in quality. This was an Etsy purchase. This was one that I just found. And without having that program to increase the quality, this is kind of the quality that I got. I have this owl one behind me actually, but I thought it would be perfect upstairs. I needed a smaller size. So I went ahead and ordered that one. I needed some eight by tens. So I got this one. I thought it was really pretty. This one, this is another one that I found on the public domain and I went through and edited, but this one is available on Etsy. And I got this one. I liked that last one so much that I ended up ordering it in a 20 by 24. So I had this one mounted to mat board to make it like nice and sturdy. I have a big thrifted frame that I'm gonna be putting this in, so I'll show you in just a moment. But I do get questions a lot on how I print these and who I go through, because of course you can go through um, Office Max or Walgreens, but I never get good quality when I do that. And so the company that I like to use is called Impix. They are based in Kansas. So I love that I get them really quickly, but I will say, even if you live further away, they usually have all of my prints done within 24 hours of the order and they're shipping them out. So I think no matter where you live, you probably get them pretty quickly. What I always order, and I'll include all of this down below in the description box so you don't have to try to remember this. I always order the Jacle printing, which makes the colors really pretty and vibrant. And I order it on fine art paper. So as far as pricing goes, these little like five by sevens, 
Um, I mean, I did go and purchase most of the prints from Etsy, so you do have that cost as well, but to, just to get them printed, they were um, like around $2.50. These eight by tens are around $5, and then this one was 65, and then I added the mat board mount, which was an additional $15. I did have a discount. I think I was able to save 15 to 20%. On top of that, anytime you order and it exceeds $35, you get free shipping. This is not sponsored in any way. I just genuinely love going through Impix for my prints. They always come out really beautifully. They get to me quickly. So I'll have it all down in the description box. I will also include my referral link. So if you would like to order prints through them, you can save $10 off of your first order. So let's get these frames filled because I'm excited to get these put up there so I can kind of see like the final result.